Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 7 already of the Computer Craft Tutorials. So this tutorial is going to be about functions and how they work, what they do, and why they're useful. So let's jump right in. So we're going to edit a program called prog, because that's nice and short. Oh, well that's interesting. I'm already in something. Okay, there we go. Um, right, so functions. Let's say, up until now, when we've been writing code, we've just been starting at the top and just writing things like printing and putting things in variables, and adding variables variables to each other, all that kind of good stuff. Um, but that's always been from top to bottom and no structure or anything whatsoever. But let's say you're writing code that's going to be hundreds of lines long. Um, it's going to get very hard to uh, edit things and figure out where stuff is going wrong when it's not split up into chunks or small parts. Um, and that's what a function does, is it creates a small block of code which you can call um, whenever you like throughout your program and it will run that block and then go back to whatever it was doing um, before. Um, and what this does is it helps you, you know, keep a good structure in your code and if something's going wrong, you know in which function it's going wrong. Um, and then you can figure out what it is um, and edit that function, find it easily. Um, and it also, a very important, is it makes sure you don't have duplicate code throughout your program. Whenever there's a moment you're programming and you're writing exactly the same code that you already have before, you probably want to be putting that into a separate function so that you can just call the function twice and only have the code written in your program once. Um, so here's how you create a function. And it will become more clear when you need to create a function and when not. So I'm going to create a function, I'm going to call it um, do something. And when you create a function you have to put um, what do you call these things? I completely forgot what they're called. Anyway, um, you got to put those things there. I sound like an idiot now. Christ. Brackets, that's what it is. Round brackets. So you need to put brackets at the end there to, um, and we'll get to that a bit later because you can also put something in the brackets, but that's not important for now. The brackets will be empty for now. Um, and what you can do is you can type stuff in here, just like you would normal code. Let's say we want to go print hello, and that's enough for now. So. Here's our function, and nothing happens. Excellent. So that's an important thing. When you define a function um, at the top, or I don't know, maybe at the bottom of your your program, it doesn't actually get run by default. It's just there, and Lua knows it's there, uh, but you're never calling it. Um, so it's just been defined, and it's just going to sit there and do nothing until you call it. So to call it. Uh, you need to, you know, call its name, which at the moment is do something. So we're going to say do something in our program. And when you've written a function, you can just write the code you normally would at the bottom, uh, and it will it will find the function. I think you could even, if you want to, write it at the top. Whoops, we got the e again there. Okay, do something. Um, so we're calling do something twice now. And it doesn't really matter whether you start your code above functions or under it. Um, it is, you know, a good idea to at least keep it together and not have code and then random functions in between. There more code, so either put all your functions at the top of your code or all the way at the bottom, um, but don't separate your code with functions in between because it's not really good practice. Um, but I think it will work. So let's see. Now we go. Prints hello twice. because we're calling the do something method twice. So there we go. That's how you create a function and call it. Um, of course you can put many more lines here, you can start doing for loops and all that good stuff. Um, you can make this as big as you like. Um, though I would advise not to make it too big. As soon as your function gets too big you want to start thinking about splitting it up into different functions. Uh, basically, a function wants to have one job it does, and that's it. It needs to be a very simple job, not too many things in one function. 
Right, so that's a very basic function. Now, functions um, also have these brackets here at the end. And what you can do is you can put variables into a function or values into a function, and the function can use them. Um, so let's say we're going to put something called variable in here, var, we're going to call it var. And rather than printing hello, we can print var instead. Now this does mean that when we call do something, we're going to have to give it something here. So I guess in this case, we just give it hello again. Uh, but the second time we call it, um, we could put something completely different in there. Like world. So let's run this. And there you go. The first time we call do something, it prints w hello. And then the second time, it prints world all of a sudden. Because what it, we're doing here, we're, we're calling do something, and then we're putting two different things into the variable when we call it. And this function, do something, is taking this variable, and no matter what it is, doesn't matter what you put in here, it's just going to use this, and whatever value you gave it, it's going to print that. So this is very useful um, with functions. You can have a block of code that does something um, for a value which you do not know what it is yet. Um, and that makes it very flexible in a way where, let's say you're using a turtle and you want to remember what coordinates it's at, you could put any coordinate in this variable, and for example, add one if you go forward. Um, and then it's done, it works. Um, and no matter what value the x or the coordinate was before, it'll just add one and the coordinate will be the correct one afterwards. So there's no hard coding going on or anything tricky like that. Um, and you can also add multiple variables if you like. You could go var, whoops, var2, var3, and so forth. does mean you're going to have to do that here as well when you call it. You have to give it just as many um, arguments or parameters, whatever you want to call it. There is a slight difference. Um, I guess I can explain that. I didn't actually know this either, I looked up on Wikipedia, um, but you call it a parameter when you're kind of defining it in the in the function, you're saying okay this function has three parameters, that's this var, var2 and var3, and as soon as you call it um, you're giving it arguments, so hello would be an argument of the parameter var, and <coughs> I guess we can put world here would be the argument of the parameter var2. So that's kind of how you would say it, but you can, you can use that. Um, both those words really people don't dick around with the distinction that much. Um, so call them parameters or arguments, whatever you like, doesn't really matter. Right, so there we go. You can also do multiple variables if you like in a function. Blah, that'll do for now. Um, you don't have to use them, you can if you like. So there you go, you can give your function, uh, let me get variable, let me do a little bit better example here. Let's say we're going to make this the multiply. So we're going to have two variables and we're going to multiply them. See, I've been putting text in all the time here. We can also put numbers if we like. Now I just changed the name of the function, so we're going to have to change the name here. Calling do something is not going to work anymore. It's going to say, I can't find the function, help me. Um, so there we go, multiply. I'm going to do 3, 4 for example. And we're going to print var times var 2. There you go. And program. Oh god. Oh, what did I do? Uh, okay, that's not good. Here it is. <laughs> I thought I lost it for a second there. Mm, print uh, to. Interesting.
excuse me while I uh, try to figure out what earth is going wrong here. <coughs> Just realized I misspelled multiply the second time. I thought I did it correctly the first time. Um, try this one more time. There we go, now it's working for some reason. I'm guessing what it is. Um, is in, in some programming languages you have to define the function before you use it. So as you can see I put multiply 3 4 all the way at the top first um, but I hadn't actually defined the function itself yet so I was trying to find the function multiply but it wasn't you know the actual definition was under where I was trying to call it um, which in for example C would not be possible so I guess Lua can't do that either although it did work when I called it do something so I'm not quite sure what's going on there um, but for now what I'll do is put your functions at the top and then your actual code at the bottom of your file. Um, I think that works the best for now. Anyway, here we go. We have a multiply function, uh, the two variables, and then we print the variable times the other variable. And there we go. So it's 3 times 4 now is 12, but yeah, we can do whatever we like, of course. Multiply 34 and 94. And it'll do that too. There we go. Apparently that's 3196. So there you go. That's the power of a function. You can do the same code um, with different numbers, different variables, if you like. And it saves you, you know, doing this line of code uh, over and over and over again for different numbers or different variables. So that's the power of the function. Um, now, of course, we're just printing the value here. But what a function can also do is return a value. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that in the next video in part two because I don't want to make my videos too long. So I will see you then in a second.